The purpose of this lesson is to continue building upon the application of ratings and impressions as the currency to evaluate the efficiency of programming vehicles and media in general, and as they relate to pricing and delivery of audiences. In previous video lesson, you learn about ratings and impressions, very basic. In this lesson, we're going to go deeper, and we're going to understand how to apply these audience measurement to pricing and negotiating costs or rates to broadcast airtime, specifically. When I say cost or rates, I mean, a, let's say, a 30-second commercial, how much will it cost to air in the commercial break of a given program? After you finish this video lesson, you will be able to use ratings and impressions to analyze programming cost efficiencies, understand the terminology associated with media efficiencies, understand specifically the calculation of cost per point and cost per thousand, and how they apply when pricing media, as well as negotiating airtime. So let's start with the basic terminology that you need to understand. Rate. The rate is the cost a media outlet charges for its inventory, in this case, airtime. For example, the rate is how much a television station charges for a 30-second commercial to run in the commercial uh, break, let's say, of a primetime program. Programs or programming. This is content or shows that air in the station different day parts or times. For example, news, sports, uh, World Cup games, etc. These are all examples of program or content. Television day parts. This is how television labels the hours or of the day in sections. For example, this is the order of stations' day parts with approximate hours. Let's say early morning, 4 to 9 a.m., daytime. Daytime can be between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., although it could be further divided into morning uh, daytime and afternoon daytime. Early fringe. Early fringe is typically between 3 to 5 or 4 to 6, right after daytime and right before early news. Early news. Early news can be 6 to 7 in some markets. It could be 5 to 7 in other markets, or it could be, you know, as early as 4, but it's the block of early news. Prime access. Prime access is the hour before prime time, which is 7 to 8 p.m. Prime time. Prime time is uh, the largest audience typically that a station ha has, and it's between 8 and 11 p.m. Late news. Late news is typically, again, each station may be a little bit different. And also, you have to think if you're in Central or Eastern uh, time. So, but, so these are generalities. So late uh, news is typically between 11 and 11.30. Late fringe is right after late news, which is, again, uh, give and take, 11.30 to 1.30, 1 a.m. Overnight is right after late fringe and right before your early morning. So it could be between uh, 1.30 and 5 or 4.30, depending on when early morning starts for that station. Then weekend can be a day part. Sports can be another day part. Again, every station defines their day parts as they decide because these are just uh, very general guidelines. Uh, quarters. In business, we think in quarters. So the year is divided into four quarters. First quarter, which is January, February, March. Second quarter, which is April, May, and June. Third quarter is July, August, September. And fourth quarter is October, November, December. Media buy. This is also called a buying brief, buying specs or specifications. Uh, but technically what it is is a document that defines the market or markets, the media to buy, the campaign dates or weeks, the ratings, how many to buy, the demographic that we're buying against, the budget that may be defined in CPM uh, and CPP, the day parts that you're buying, among other specs. 
avail availabilities, uh, which is in short avails. This is a report that the media, in this case, let's say a television station, gives the buyer of what programming is available. The ratings and impressions audience delivery for each program and how much does it cost for a commercial placement is included in that report. Cost per point, it is exactly what it means. How much does it cost for each rating point bought in a show or in a day part? Cost per thousand. This is relative to the cost per point. Remember that rating points are percentages that are calculated from raw numbers called impressions or the eyeballs, or the audience watching the program. Cost per thousand, it means that how much, cost, how much does it cost to reach 1,000 people or 1,000 eyeballs that are maybe watching that particular program? The media buyer. The media buyer is the person at the advertising agency, or some media buyers are you know, with the client, but these uh, professionals are responsible to analyze all programming options that best reach the target audience. They negotiate costs or rates. They purchase and place the airtime or the space or the, the inventory in general. And they monitor to make sure that it is running as intended and delivering the audience numbers agreed upon between the buyer and the seller or the media. The media planner. The planner uh, or media planner is the person at the ad agency, and some are you know, within clients uh, as well, but this is uh, that particular professional within, let's say, an ad agency that plans the media strategy for the client based on the client's business and their marketing objectives. After the plan and budgets are approved by the client, the media planner turns the media plans into media buys or buying briefs or buying specs and forward them to the buyers to negotiate and execute. So first, let me start by explaining some typical applications for cost per point and cost per thousand, this type of analysis. I will, I will refer to cost per point as CPP and cost per thousand as CPM. Why CPM, you ask? It takes its acronym from the Latin word for thousand, which is mil. I will review these concepts again throughout the lesson, okay? The media planner, the media buyer, and the media seller all have applications and uses for the CPP and the CPM, but let's sum a few. A media planner uses the CPM and CPP to plan and set budgets by the quarter or time of the year, by the market, by the day part, day part or by the and by the demographic. The media buyer and the media seller use the CPM and the CPP as negotiating mechanisms. The CPM and the CPP serve as the guide to evaluate and compare efficiencies of a media vehicle among media vehicles and between competitive programs in the market. I hope that's clear, so let's start. So we have already studied how uh, to calculate a rating and what is a rating and what is an impression. Imagine if you're a media buyer and you have to put together a television media buy in a market that has six stations. and your media buy uh, includes prime time, which by the way is the most profitable television day part because it traditionally draws the biggest audience of all programming on television. And uh, prime time uh, runs Monday through Saturday, eight to 11. and Sunday, 7 to 11 p.m. So if you do the math, that's three hours of programming per day, multiplied times seven days a week with an additional hour on Sunday. So basically, you have to analyze and negotiate 
22 hours of prime time alone, you know, for one station. So if you follow this example, in a six TV station market, imagine, and some markets have even more TV stations. We're just keeping it simple. Imagine that each station has 22 hours of prime time, and that's programs that they have to fill those 22 hours. So if you do the math, six, six stations in the market times 22 hours of prime time per station, that's 132 programming choices or 132 uh, hours of prime time. And each of those choices or programs has ratings, they have their corresponding impressions, and they have a unit rate or cost for commercial placement. So if you do not have a mechanism to analyze all these numbers on an equal uh, scale, what exactly would guide you? What a mess, right? But that's where CPM and CPP analysis comes in. So let me explain. A typical negotiation between an advertising agency buyer and a media seller, also known as a television account executive or a rep, which is short for representatives, is as follows. The media planner's uh, plan is developed into a media buy. Also, again, known as a buying brief or buying specs or specifications. And each agency has their own terminology. The media buy is delivered to the media buyer who analyzes what's required. The media buyer calls each station rep and request the avails based on the parameters stipulated on the buying brief. The avails are delivered from the station to the buyer. The buyer starts analyzing the cost to audience delivery relationship using CPM or CPP. The buyer uses this analysis to negotiate the programming rates and negotiates with the station or the media. The station and the buyer agree on the cost, also called you know, by negotiation, and the ratings and impressions delivery. We will discuss this one uh, later. The media buyer places the buy to the television station, and the media buy to that specific station becomes a contract between the agency on behalf of the client and the media seller. The media buyer monitors the schedule that they place to make sure it runs as contracted. And this is, by the way, also known as stewardship, but that's another lesson. What you also have to understand is that each rating point and impressions has a market cost or a supply and demand cost. What this means is that the market dictates the going rate or the value for that particular audience as for rating and impressions for that uh, day part, for that quarter, for that demo. Put it this way, media value is like real estate. Sometimes a house value is higher, sometimes the, high, uh, the house value depreciates, sometimes it is a buyer's market, sometimes it is a seller's market, it depends. It sounds like a basic economic principle of supply and demand, right? Remember the housing market crash that happened in the U.S.? I, I would say it was between 2007, 2008. In the years prior, it was a seller's market, and houses were not in the market for long, and sometimes buyers were outbidding each other for houses being sold. And that's what is called a seller's market, where the demand outplay, outpaces the supply, and thus pricing for that commodity being sold increases. On the other hand, and after the housing crash, the economy just went sour, and buyers started retracting, and house sales slowed down considerably. Now, buyers could buy homes and had the, the upper hand, negotiating, because the supply outpaced the demand. When this happens, it becomes a buyer's market. 
and prices for the commodity tends to drop. By the way, this is exactly how the media market works and how uh, the loss of supply and demand also rule pricing. When there is a healthy demand for television or you know media inventory, demand outpacing supply affects pricing and the other way around. For a one hour TV show, approximately 45 minutes are programming or program content and 15 minutes give and take are commercial airtime. Those 15 minutes of commercial airtime are the bread and butter of a television station. In other words, that is the inventory or commodity that they're selling. With a healthy demand on their inventory, the station's airtime has to be priced accordingly. In normal market conditions, where the buyer and the seller's market conditions are fairly equal, the, the guide for these negotiations are CPM and CPP, and each programming choice is evaluated individually, taking into consideration the buyer's budget or allowance expressed as a CPP or a CPM, and the seller's supply and demand pricing on that inventory or commercial airtime, in, in the case of broadcast. Now that you understand the principles, let's start with the application. So let's take the examples that we started working on. On the lesson chart where you have already calculated the ratings based on the impressions delivery for each program and the universe in this particular case of adults 18 to 49. So now what we're doing is adding pricing for each. So number one, let's calculate cost per point. So when you're calculated uh, cost per point, again, you already know how to calculate a rating by taking the program or the show's demo impressions, in this case it's adults 18 to 49, divided by the universe or the de of the demo and multiplying them times 100. So let's take American Idol. In American Idol, the rating is 11.1, so we're rounding. If you look at the PowerPoint chart, there is a rate for a 30-second commercial placement of $15,000. That means that for every commercial unit that you're going to be placing in this program, it's going to cost you $15,000. Now, the cost per point is calculated by taking the rate, which is the $15,000, divided by the rating, which is 11.1. .1. And uh, again, when you do this calculation, what that means, when you do the calculation, the uh, actual uh, cost per point or the cost for each rating point in American Idol is $1,351 with 35 cents. Now, what you can do is pause the video, go to the chart of the video lesson, and calculate the cost per point for all the programs in the chart. By the way, you can always find the answers in the full lesson PowerPoint. So let's continue. So now we're going to be calculating CPM. So let me, let me put here clearly CPP, and this is your CPP, and now we're calculating CPM. So now this is a little bit trickier, but really simple to understand once you get it. You already know that there are, and let me write this down, 14,140,000 adults 18 to 49 watching American Idol. The trick here is to understand that we're calculating the cost to reach 1,000 people in that program, not the cost to reach every person. 
In this case, it's as simple, and let me, let me write again the rate here, because we're going to be using the exact same rate. The trick here is to understand that you're not uh, calculating the cost to reach every person. You're calculating the cost to reach every thousand people in that particular, you know, placement. So here, what you can do is you can scratch the last three zeros or you can, and just keep this in mind always, you divide the total impressions by a thousand and that the concept here is that there's fourteen thousand one hundred and forty thousands in fourteen million one hundred and forty thousand one hundred people uh, one there's fourteen million one hundred and forty thousands in 14,140,000. So hopefully this is clear. Now that you understand this, you take the same rate, $15,000, and you divide by 14,140, and the answer here is $1.06. So each program has a cost per point and accompanying cost per thousand. By the way, since not all media is measured by ratings, the universal measure to calculate cost efficiencies is CPM. Think about it. Not all media has ratings, but all of them have impressions, meaning people consuming or exposed to this particular media or media vehicle. And campaigns also means that various media such as TV, radio, newspaper, web, social media, mobile media, out of home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you're going to be uh, running campaigns that includes multiple media. Now, go back to the chart in the video lesson and calculate the cost per thousand for all the programs in the chart. You can also remember, find the answers in the full lesson PowerPoint. So hopefully this was clear, and I'll see you in the next video lesson.